Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Quite simply the most amazing fishing show for all round fishing that you're ever going to find on YouTube. That's my opinion anyway, what do I know? Now then, see what this is. Answers on a postcard, any suggestions? Hmm, looks like a sponge, doesn't it? It is a sponge. And do you know what? That's exactly what is happening to our Totally Awesome Fishing Show. We have got so many requests from people all over the world. They are like sponges soaking up information from us. Obviously, after 50 years of intensive journalism and fishing, I have got lots in here. So that's why I'm trying to pass on tips. If you are an alleged expert, walk on by, you probably won't be interested. If you are a beginner, a newcomer, or somebody returning to the sport after a few years, hmm, I might just have a few tips for you that help you catch the extra fish. Now, species today, shore fishing. Now, a lot of guys in America have been contacting us. They are loving it. You guys call it surf fishing over there. We call it beach fishing, shore fishing. Fishing from the land, the solid stuff, not the wet stuff. Okay, one of the species we've got over, over here in the UK is called a smooth hound. When you really get them running through, sort of migratory pattern, I guess, really, in the summer months. Now, that's rare in England because we don't get much of a summer, do we? No. So we don't get to catch these smooth hounds very often. When we do, you've got to cash in, you've got to get it right. Okay, all I hear about smooth hound fishing is distance, 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 you've got to punch the baits out. No, you've got to get a big bait out there. And that bait generally, generally speaking, is a crab. It can be a peeler crab or it can be a hardback crab, just a regular green shore crab. Forecasting out a good beach reel, a good beach rod, something that throws not 250 yards, but something that just gets you out there and can lump that bait out there. 80 yards, I think that's fair to say, because a lot of guys cast off a field tournament wise and they cast catastrophic distances. I think it's close to 300, 300 meters or 300 yards over here in England. I think we've got world records, casters. What's it got to do with fishing? Well, absolutely nothing. It's just long casting on the grass field. There's no fish swimming about on the field, is there? So I figure 80, 80 to 100 to 110 yards is generally in the kill zone of most fishing areas. Now, what do you need for that? 12 foot beach caster, two piece, if you can get it. Something that throws around five ounces and will be a good average weight to throw off a British shoreline. You want a big old lump of a fixed ball, what we call a food mixer. One of these does the job. If you're a beginner, fairly trouble free, open the bail arm, the line comes in here, away you go, you cast a long way, you will get 80 to 110 or 120 yards of one of these. More important, the drag on the front is dead easy to work. Screw it down, loosen it off, dead easy. Minimum 15 pound, 20 pound line, that's what I've got on there. Nice big handle. Quick easy sessions, get the bait in. Man, you've got to go with the big fixed ball. Okay, let's look at the terminal rig for the smooth hound. Right guys, change of glasses over to the close-up, I can see the hooks now, pair of glasses. Right, terminal rigs. There's one terminal rig over here in the UK that's really, really popular. Comes on these little winders. Well, then come on, then you can buy these little winders, obviously. It's called the pulley rig, but with these little winders, they're dead easy to pulley them off. <laughs> I love that one. Now, it's so simple, this one. We may have mentioned it before. It's just a piece of piece of fishing line. Can be 160 to 100 pounds here, right? Which is basically your shot lead. You always use shot lead when beach casting. A little link at the top up here to which you tie, uh, you clip your fish hook. A swivel there, which is running, if you can see it's running up and down there and it comes up against a bead and a swivel. So if I show it this way, let's imagine it. Let me get in there close. Here's your rod top, comes down from your rod top. You can tie it onto the middle swivel here. So the rig actually holds like that, if you can see. So on one end, the lead will go. On the trace here, on the other end, is the hook. Now let me put and let on for you, just on one of these little quick links, I call them a quick link. They've got a, it's not so quick is it, it's not working, it's not working, it's on. Okay, so this is a wire grip leg, it has a vein on it, 
I've moulded these myself. So, and you can adjust these tensions by pinching them down tight like this. And they've got little plastic sleeves that drop into notches on there. So, I know a lot of you know all about this, but people over there, maybe in the States, maybe they don't use these sort of breakout uh, leads here. So you cast out, sinks to the bottom, the grip leads, these spikes gripping the sand. When you pull to retrieve in, bing, they just fall out like this. And you can re-snap them. So you can buy moulds for these and make your own if you want. So the lead's on there, and that's got veins on it, so that it can actually flight better, and it's not, you know, wobbling all over the place, but they've got a vein one on there. So the rig is like this. It's dead, dead simple. I love this rig. It's really good. It's basically for rough ground fishing. You tie, obviously you bait the hook. You bait the hook with a, say, peeler crab, if you want, and you put the hook into the clip, the little bait holder clip there. Right, now, as you cast out, whizz, through the water like that, this hits the sea, bing, it releases. You see it swinging there, the bait free. It lays on the seabed until Mr. Fish comes along, hopefully Mr. Smoothhound. He picks it up, he goes off. As you wind into strike, this slides all the way along here, pulling that lead all the way up, bang, to the swivel. The reason being, as you're pulling that fish up like this here, the fish is back here fighting, this lead is then up off the bottom, out of the way of snakes. However, I just make my own up with a running ledger because I fish not so much with peeler crabs, just with a regular, regular hardback crab. What a smoothie house eat, they eat crabs. Do they eat peeler crabs? Of course they eat peeler crabs. Would they pass 10 hardback crabs crawling along the seabed to find Mr. Peeler? I feel not. I feel they are hungry, related to a sort of gummy, toothless shark. And man, they're eating that crab that's in front of their nose. Trust me, hardback or otherwise. So don't worry too much about peelers. This one is just a straight running ledger rig. So here is, I'm put a swivel on there. You put a swivel or one of those links on there. Out of your rod top with a say 50, 60 pound shot leader. Onto the swivel here. The rig, I will show you, is like this. It is just a basic running ledger. Because with a big crab bait, the reason I do this, I can either free cast this without clipping the bait up for distance cast. So say when you're looking at 80 to 110 yards maximum, even less than that, they come right in close to shore. Fix the wires on. Now I've got that on a running ledger. So as you can see there, I've got, the, I've got a link swivel to clip the lead onto. I've got a rubber bead, not a plastic one, a rubber bead which helps sort of cushion and absorb some of the shock of that link when you're casting. That comes up against the knot of the swivel. There's my trace, 50 pound mono down to the hook. Now this one's quite a long trace. Yours will be, measure it like that, Graham. That's a meter. It's a meter long to the hook. I could have stuck that hook in my nose then. That would have been bad. How do I explain that to the wife? <laughs> anyway, bait goes on here. That's running up and down. Now here's the important thing. You can either lob that out with a fixed ball and if it does, it's going to whirl a bit in the air. I'll show you later on in the film how to elasticate your crab on. Or what I do, I just make a big bait holder there, a hook holder, out of a paper clip. Yes, I make an eye at the top of the paper clip here. I put some kinks in it. So I basically thread my line through the eye, so it's sliding up and down like this. Okay, stop it where I want. And those little kinks, I can wrap the wire around, uh, the fishing line around the wire to there. That locks it, but I've got a great big tag end here on which I can put Mr. Very Large Shore Crab. Rest him in there in the hook, like that. Obviously I adjust this. Now this one, as the lead hits the water, bang, it comes free. You probably didn't even see that, but there's no hook on there now, and that's because it's down here. And it's got a nice long running ledger. And if I get a bite, he doesn't feel the drag of the lead, which is gripping in the seabed, it's running, it's running. So I should get bang, 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 a good old rod bite, and he won't let go of that crab. That's the theory. Okay, guys, we need to go fishing now. We're going to go down to Selsey Bill on the south coast of England, where they get a run of smooth hounds. I was supposed to go there last night. Not last night, Graham, not last night. You're making the film a week later. Talk sense. I was supposed to go fishing there with a group of beach fishermen a previous evening, However, due to work commitments, I was unable to make that arrangement. But I thought, I'd try these guys in the old daytime. Do you need to fish at night? 
obviously they feed better at night. Well, I don't think so. They're hungry, they're running through, and that's what I'm gonna do. Final tip, guys. You can use one of these winders if you want, or you can use <laughs> a piece of insulation tube to put all your rigs on. Cut it to whatever size you want. It goes over pipes. It's got a split in it there. So you just tuck your swivel in there. You wind your rig around it. You pop the hook like that into the, pla whatever this stuff is, polyurethane, plastic or rubber or foam. And that's it, it's the same thing. So that does a single one, fine. That one does 12 to 15. The area off Selsey Bill has quite a bit of fishing availability for you. It's a big open beach. It's what we call a storm beach. It's open to the ravages of the southwesterly airflows we had bringing in all these storms from the Atlantic. But they put up these big boulders as sort of groins or breakwater to try and break up the, uh, the waves before they destroy all the beach and erode it back to where those houses are. So big, steep shingle beaches there. A lot of current coming around the end of Selsey Bill so it gets a lot of weed coming around the edge as well. I set up my base camp just inside the tip of Celsi Bill, not right actually on the outside, but I wanted to use those big breakwaters with those stones as a sort of screen because it doesn't look it there, but the wind was howling. It was pretty rough out at sea. There were a few boats out there and it was a daytime session. The previous night, some of the guys have been out and they caught smooth hounds, but night fishing, is not day fishing. Would I catch? I had no idea. In fact, I'd never even fished here in my life before. But what I did get was some hardback crabs. I collected them at Langston Harbour, um, just inside the uh, north end of Hailing Island. Took those down there. The wind, as you can see, the most hated sight of all fishermen, a straight windsock. There was a couple of other anglers on holiday down there fishing away, getting mostly weed, which didn't instill any enthusiasm into me. Uh, Celsius does get during the months of let's say anything from the end of May through to July uh, a lot of weed going through there and as you can see here I'm just using a free swinging hardback crab on that running ledge I've not even bothered to clip it up fixed spool reel and I'm going to give it a good lump out there probably 80 to 100 yards uh, no world record breakers but nice clean water out there good chance of getting fish I felt anyway at least the bait was out there the guys had had you know, a fish or two the night before, more than a fish or two, I think. So I set up with the rods and the, and the rod rest. Now, why you might think, am I got three rods and a double rod rest? Well, I've got a couple of smooth hound rods out with shore crab, but I also wanted an uptide. I'd used a Coniflex uptide rod, just as my sort of third beach rod, uh, for a possibility of getting a big bass. Now, here's what we do, hard back crab. Just get hold of some elasticated thread and bind one side of the legs of the crab onto the shank of the hook. Now this is just the way I do it. You can do it differently. All I can say is when I go boat fishing for smooth hounds uh, with Wayne Combin, he's another small boat expert um, down out of the uh, Isle of Wight area. This is all we use, hard back crabs. We don't waste our time with peelers and, and they smash them out of sight generally. So um, I thought, right, let's give these old hard backs a, a good old whistle test off here. I don't snap it off. I, like you would normally bind it to the bait, I put the thread through the hole in the elastic two, three times, knot it off in a little half hitch, finish off a few extra winds, then snap it off. Here is the totally awesome fishing tip, guys. Take a piece of squid, slice it up, scrape off the flesh, you know, the skin off the outside, so it's nice and clean. And what I do is I put, say, two or three pieces like this. In this particular case, I've got doubles on there and I put those onto the back of the crab, just linking it once, or nicking it once through the hook like that and lay it there. It gives some visuals for daytime fishing. It gives that little visual attraction to any passing smooth hound. That's what I feel, or even a bass. It just lets them see there's a bait there. Now there's a grip ledge, you can see it's pulled out. This is my whole squid elasticated on and thrown up against the edge of those groins as far as I can get on the point in case there is a rogue bass around. In this case, well, there wasn't, but I always like to throw out that bonus rod and you can't beat a big squid or even a big mackerel head if you're gonna fish for a uh, bass. However, I was at a smooth hound. Was I gonna catch? I had absolutely no idea because I'd never even fished here before. 
but trouble-free, fixable wheels did the job for me. Guys, I'm on, I'm on with the crab. Oh man, what a bite, they took the right out of the rest. Very, very windy. Just, oh, it's a big fish, big fish. I've got to take the camera down if I can. Oh, there he is. Like a shark, like a big shark in there. I'm going to try and get him down without losing him. There he is. I think you see him down there. He's ripping. He's ripping out there. Just in the shallows. Fingers crossed to get to show you one. Got a nice big smooth hand, guys. Down here on Celsius Bill. We'll try and bring him up to the camera for you. Oh, 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 oh. There you go. I can't even hold this one. That is a monster. Big. Let's see if he'll calm down. Double figure smooth hound there. I'll tell you what, that fish got to be not far or 15 pounds, I would say. And there's the crab, what's left of the crab underneath. So pay me to collect those crabs. What a, what a super fish. That is a big old smoothie. And they used to call these a starry smooth hound because of the dots here across the top. But in fact, the starry smooth hound is the same as the ordinary smooth hound. The DNA has been proven to be exactly the same. So really, there's no such thing as a starry. It just has lots of big dots on it. What a crackerjack fish. I was going to tag this one with a shark tag, so that's what I can do. But I forgot the tag, so let's get it back in the water quick. With the renewed enthusiasm that only a good double figure fish could bring, I was winding in and fresh baiting and casting crabs out like you wouldn't believe. When those smooth arms run, you get that first bite, somebody loses one, or you do get a fish. Everybody but everybody brings their terminal gear in, checks the bait, puts fresh bait on and get it out there because they do run through and they can come as a pack fish. You can get more than one. Well guys, just had a shout down the beach. The guys next to me got a hound on my thing here. They just give me a shout, go and see if, see if we can get one in close up in action for you. And the wind's howling at the moment. Oh, well done. Well done. I was just about to nod off. I thought we had all gone, all happened. What bait have you got on there? Uh, Ragwell. Oh, just on rag, yeah? Yeah, that's it. Here he is on the beach. I'll follow you down. Oh, oh no, oh no! <laughs> so close to fame, he was. <laughs> the weather wasn't getting any better, and I kept firing that squid out onto the point of the groins where the edge of the current was coming around. I just still had high hopes of a bass as well, but I was well pleased to get a double figure smooth hound. More than pleased, in fact, having never fished here before. And you know what, these fish can come through at any state of the tide. Low tide, mid flood, mid ebb, top of the tide. You've got to be in it to win it. Get yourself out on Celsiusville for smooth hound when they're running. 
keep your ear to the ground if they're out there and you hear the tackle shots on the on the grapevine or on the forms at the smooth answer starting to run get out there hard back crab that's all i used and as you see it worked and the squid in fact that one has been pinched off so that was the end of the session it was a totally awesome fishing session and i'm sure i hope there's going to be some more for you beach guys <laughs>